In this video, I will talk about hospital patient transport dispatcher job responsibility, especially patient care duties and responsibility. What are those? Hi, my name is John. If you don't know, I used to be an EMT in Los Angeles. And then I moved into a trauma hospital working as a patient transporter, got promoted into hospital dispatcher. So let's jump into the topic. What are the job duties and responsibility for patient care? A quick job summary. As a hospital patient transport dispatcher, you will be responsible for the timely coordination of patient transport throughout the whole hospital. As a patient transport dispatcher, you will be responsible for re coordinating and prioritizing the patient transport car with the hospital department and hospital staff to ensure an efficient workflow. As a patient transport dispatcher, you are expected to talk and to manage your team members. At the same time, you have to coordinate and talk with chart nurse, RNs, department techs such as MRI, CT, X-ray, and also you have to talk with administration sometimes depend on the how busy or how hectic your day is. And overall, you have to keep an open communication with the house soup to ensure that we know which patient call is prioritized, which one is routine, especially during the emergency diversion situation where everything is all over the place. So as a patient hospital uh, dispatcher, you have to make sure that everything is working accordingly had to be organized so patient care responsibility number one be very very flexible with your schedule and your patient call priorities so what does that mean so if you're working in a hospital especially in a trauma hospital there will be a time when your schedule will be all over the place until you have a really good list of like organized call sometimes things will pop up and you have to fix your schedule. So let's say that you uh, you have a call, that call could be delayed due to let's say patient's eating or the nurse is changing the patient or it could be that uh, the patient have a doctor, doctor consultation. So during that time, there's nothing you can do. So there will be delay with your call. So a lot of things will get pushed back. Another thing, ship change. So let's say ship change, during that 30 minutes, sometimes you can't really get the nurse to sign up. So the nurse will get pushed back to another nurse. So you have to talk to another nurse. So there's a lot of uh, complication arise during ship change. Another thing, emergency surgery, emergency call, a critical call. If you work in a trauma hospital, sometimes you, you get a call from a nurse or a chart nurse say, Hey John, I have this patient that need to go stat to MI. Hey John, I need to have this patient go stat to ICU. Hey John, I have this patient that need to go stat to CT. So at that point, those patients are more critical, have more priority. So let's say you have all your patients on the list. Let's say one, two, three. Those patients get pushed back. That critical stat patient will go first. Now let's say you have three stat patients. At that point, you had to talk to the house soup and say, hey, I have all these three, three and five stat patients. Which one would you want me to do? So have an open communication with your house soup, with a chart nurse, with the department. And sometimes let's say if I have a call from an ER to ICU, and if I have all the stat patients, I'll say, hey, Nate, I know that you're really packed right now. I'm really busy. I have all these stat patients. I know you have ER tech in the, in the ER, can you get the ER tech to help you? Work with the nurse, work with the chart nurse and figure out a way how you could make it work efficiently as possible. Two, transport patient. So most the time inside a trauma hospital or most hospital, most patients will go by wheelchair, gurney or beds. Now with wheelchair and gurney, you could delegate your t uh, team member to get a wheelchair, get a gurney, transport patient from point A to point B, usually from a floor uh, bed to uh, operation or through routine calls. Now, for bed situation, 
In California, it's required by law, you need two people to transport a patient by bed. So what does this mean? So let's for example, let's say that you're getting a patient from MedSearch going down to CT for a CAT scan. At that point, you as a dispatcher, you have to figure out a way to get two transport uh, staff to the mistress floor to transport the patient down. Because most of the time, the nurse will not go with you, the um, CNA will not go with you because they will be busy on the floor. At that point, it's going to be you have you have to look at your nurse and figure out a way to schedule two staff members to do a bed call, or you yourself as a dispatcher have to go help the staff member to bring the bed with the patient down to the CT. So number three, transport knowledge and safety. So what I mean by knowledge. So inside a hospital, if you're in a trauma hospital, you will see more different type of patient. So you get non-critical and you get a critical patient. So what do I mean by a critical patient? Critical patient could be like broken bones or spinal precaution, Patient could be in isolation or patient is on a ventilator. So if patient is on ventilator, patient need an RT to go from one place to another. So RT, respiratory therapist. So for example, right, let's say I get a call from ER. Hey John, I have this patient going from ER, going to ICU. Uh, the RT will be here in 10 minutes. So that's your information, right? So as a dispatcher, you will give that information to your staff member and say, hey, I have this call coming out from ER, going from ER, going to ICU, the medical record, the patient name, all the information for the patient. The RT will be there in 10 minutes ETA, get there, help the patient, get, help the nurse with setting up the cardiac heart monitor. At the same time, get the IV pump ready, help the nurse and maybe the RT, if the RT is there with the oxygen and get the patient from ER to ICU. That's your call. Number four, maintain an ongoing clear communication with staff and the patient. As a dispatcher, your main number one job priorities is to ensure that all your team members, all your staff have the correct information. When you relay the information from the nurse to your staff member, what do I mean by this? So when you get a call, right, you have to let your team member know the patient name, the medical record, who's the, who's the caller, and who, where the patient going. So patient is going from ER to ICU or from the med church going down to CT or X-ray. So make sure, a quick tip, make sure that your staff member, when they go and get a patient, make sure that they check the risk ID, the patient ID on the patient, on a patient wrist, there will be ID, the patient name, the medical record, data birth, all those stuff. So make sure they ha they know who the patient is, because we don't want, like as the dispatcher, we don't want a call from a nurse or a tech to say, "Hey, John, why is this patient here? I thought I called for this patient." That's why you want to make sure that when you give the information to your staff member, they check the ID, they check, make sure they get the correct patient to take to the operation, take them to a department. So from point A to point B, make sure it's the right patient. At the same time, you have to keep on ongoing, clear communication with your patient, with your staff, and with the department. If they're delayed, you have to let them know. So for example, right, let's say if there's a patient in x-ray holding, but you have all this stat and priority call, that will push back the delay for this patient. You have to call the department, the x-ray department and say, hey, right now I have all this staff patient. Let, please let the patient know that will be about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes delay. I will try my best to get the, my staff member to get to the x-ray to bring the patient back to the floor as quickly as possible. Apologize and try your best to get to the patient as quickly as possible. But again, make sure you have a ongoing clear communication with everyone inside hospital. Number five, patient care paperwork. So inside hospital, every time you pick up a patient and transport a patient from point A to point B, you have to get signature for patient transport of care. So for example, right, let's say you pick up a patient from the mistress going down to x-ray. So the nurse on the mistress floor has signed up on that paperwork. 
and then by the time you get to point B, which is the x-ray, the tech has signed up on that paperwork. So to know that, hey, I have transferred my care. So on that patient care run sheet had to be two signatures. So by the end of the day, when you collect all the, paper, uh, all the paperwork from your staff member, make sure that every paperwork have at least two signatures. At the same time, on your dispatcher list of schedule, make sure all the information is correct everything is correct, double check everything and give it to the medical record or your supervisor, depending on your hospital. Another thing, funeral, uh, funeral personnel or mold situation, let's say inside a hospital, sometimes patient will pass away. When that happened, the nurse will call you and you had to come and pick up the body, bring it down to a mold. Sometimes the funeral personnel will come and pick up the body to bring to the funeral. But as a dispatcher, your job is to Get the information, give it to your team member, have the team member pick up the body, bring it down to a mode. If everyone's busy, you have to do it yourself. Get the, inf uh, get the body, bring it down to a mode. The most important thing is get the paperwork. The paperwork has to go to your house soup. So when that happens, let's say I get a call from the nurse, say, hey, I have a body, go down to a mode. I will send my st staff member, at the same time remind the staff member, hey, now after you're done, bring the paperwork to the house soup. And then I also call the house soup and say, hey, now, I have a body going down to the mode right now. My staff will bring you the paperwork after he's done, he or she's done with the body in the, uh, in the mode. So make sure all the paperwork, either going to the medical record, going to the supervisor, going to the house soup. So, Paperwork is very important inside the hospital, so make sure you're on top of that. Well, I hope you learned something new from this video. What is your thought on the patient care responsibility of a hospital dispatcher? Let me know down in the comment. And like and subscribe. On this channel, I talk about my life experiences and my journey in healthcare. And maybe you can learn something new from my journey. Okay, hope you have a good day. Take care of yourself, believe in yourself, trust yourself, and love yourself. And I will see you again on the next video. Bye, take care.